Hi and welcome to the SLR Digital Photography course. This course is designed to give you the confidence to be able to shoot at a professional level. Whether you're shooting weddings, babies, portraits or landscapes. In this course we cover the fundamentals of digital photography including a hands-on approach of the different settings on your camera. One of the best ways to avoid camera shake is with a good sturdy tripod. A professional almost always shoots with one. If you're shooting sports, a good choice to reduce camera shake is with a monopod. It's easy to pan on moving subjects and it's light and portable. Next tip is to try to remove yourself away from the camera with a shutter release. It's a simple affordable solution. Holding your camera properly is one of the easiest ways to reduce camera shake and many people seem to get it wrong. Some of the best long exposures I've done at night have been handheld without a tripod. You get to a really nice scene, you're there with your camera, you don't have a tripod, so what do you do? I'll show you this quick, easy method where you can get five to 10 second exposures at night without a tripod. One of the biggest differences between a normal photo and a work of art is your composition. One of the first rules to learn is a rule of thirds. This dates back thousands of years and is sometimes referred to as the golden section. In your viewfinder, draw two horizontal lines and two vertical lines. Most cameras have this grid inbuilt into their camera and you only need to switch it on. You'll find that most cameras have three to four different metering modes, evaluative or multi-metering, partial metering, spot metering, and center weighted metering. We'll focus on the three main modes. You'll be able to follow through with me in the course as we explain how you can achieve each one of these fundamentals and in turn improve your photos dramatically. We'll also give you the different tricks that professionals use to make sure they always have that perfect shot. Getting the right exposure is up to you and what you want to be doing with your exposures creatively. Here I'm going to be shooting a couple of different exposures using a wide aperture and a small aperture. Taking photos on a bright sunny day is not the ideal situation, but it's a common event for most of us. So let's look at some ways that we can combat this bright sun. I'm using today one of these. It's a five in one reflector. You'll find they're invaluable. I'm starting out here with using the diffuser part of the reflector kit to diffuse the sun. You need to get that diffuser between the sun and your subject. Have a look in this example. The original photo was good, but by cropping closer and using the rule of thirds, the composition looks better and you can really focus in on the expression of the surfer. Focus lock is a simple yet powerful way to compose your photo. You've got a subject smack bang into the middle of the frame, but you want to move across to use composition rules like the rule of thirds. If you abide by these rules before taking a photo, you will see a massive improvement in your photography straight away. If we know how the system works, then we can really push it. Camera modes are like your gears in a car. You wouldn't know how to drive if you didn't know how to shift gears. So let's look at what each different mode does and how we can use it. Once you have that perfect photo, then you need to store it. There are three main formats, JPEG, RAW and TIFF files. You move your grey card in front of the camera, fill out the frame, take a shot. Every manufacturer is different. With Canon, you just come through here, move down to custom white balance. So let's get started, shall we? 